Hi, yep, my name is Todd Robinson, and I've been uh, working in the hosting industry for about 12 years, and I've been working with VPSs uh, off and on for probably eight years now, uh, really starting back before there were VPSs, and we were really trying to duplicate um, what today's modern-day VPS actually works like. So, But um, here at the hosting company where I work, I often get questions about how to choose a, a VPS provider, and I wanted to talk to you about a couple things uh, that really are significant. Uh, obviously, you're going to see out there things like CPU and RAM. It's a very common thing to see when you're shopping for VPSs, uh, virtual private servers, uh, VPS hosting, it's typically called as well. Uh, but one of the things that um, is not often talked about and is a really big factor for VPSs is, is what we call I.O., input, output. And it really is almost typically associated with disk drive. So how much data can you put on and how much data can you take off of a drive and how quickly you can do it. So today we're going to talk a little bit about storage and how it affects uh, input output and uh, how it overall affects VPS performance. Uh, now, of course, unfortunately, you're not going to see this a lot on hosting company sites. But if you delve a little bit deeper, ask them a little bit about their hardware and their setup, uh, and then you should be able to get these answers. So, so let's talk a little bit about the storage. So first, I just got a list. I'm going to get up here SATA. SAS, which is serial attached SCSI, and then SSD, so solid state. And then we're going to talk about two things that are not exactly uh, the same as these types of storage units, uh, but definitely come into play in the uh, BPS world. So, yeah, again, we've got up here, we've got SATA, SAS, SSD, and cloud. So SATA, uh, you're, going to, you're going to be familiar with SATA. Uh, you've seen those in your own PC. Um, it's a, typically a big hard drive, you know, the one terabyte version, the one to two terabyte um, is a very typical size to see it in. So obviously uh, one of the benefits of SATA is you can get it in really big drives and it's relatively inexpensive. So you can buy like a terabyte drive for a hundred bucks, um, not, not unusual. Now, obviously an issue with that is, is those are typically not something you're going to see inside of a data center. And the reason for that is it's a reliability standpoint. Now, so the, the manufacturers have done tons of work in the past years to make it uh, to get them to be more and more reliable, but they're still not to the point where some of your more traditional uh, drives that you would find in a data center where they really are from a reliability standpoint. So, but uh, SATA, you certainly will see it more and more as it has become more reliable. So SATA is definitely inexpensive. Um, I mean, we could use a little key up there, but SATA is definitely, you'll find it's inexpensive. It's got big hard drives, uh, are very, very readily available. Now the big issue with them uh, now comes when we're talking about IO because uh, SATA drives are not fast. The fastest SATA drives you'll find are 7.2K, so 7,200 RPMs. And that essentially tells you how fast the drive is spinning and it gives you a hint as to how fast you can get data on and off of it. Um, so there's a couple other things associated with drives like um, on-disk caching and things like that. Um, but what you'll typically see is the those types of performance uh, attributes will increase when it has to do with uh, your more commercial class in data center type drives. So SATA, again, revisiting that real quick, it's, it's cheap, uh, it's big drives, but the, ish, the main issue with them is it's slow and then there is a reliability question. The next up is SAS, a serial attached SCSI. That's a really, you could say old technology, so it's been around for a long, long time. It used to be called SCSI, you may have heard that before. Now it's a serial attached SCSI. Um, this is the most common ones that you'll find uh, in the data center. And a uh, couple, couple of real positive attributes is the reliability is, uh, is very, very good. So they, they kind of measure those things in what's called mean time between failure, very high in, in the SAS world. Uh, from an I.O. performance standpoint, getting back to the VPS performance, these drives are faster. And in a lot of cases, they can be as much as twice as fast as the SATA drive. So you'll find them in two variations. Typically, one is a 10K and one is a 15K, so 15,000 RPMs. Um, you'll also find them in various sizes. So um, your most common one, and certainly ones that um, we talk about most, is the 3.5 inch drive. The 3.5 inch drive uh, it's a bigger drive than kind of the ones that you'll find the little two, uh, two and a half inch drives that you might see in laptops. Um, the reason that the three and a half and we prefer that is when it has a bigger radius, obviously the outside of the radius is spinning faster. You can get your data in and out uh, faster off of that. So SAS is a real common one. The problem with SAS is it's pretty expensive in relation to SATA. Um, and that's for sure. So that's, um, those are a couple of the attributes there. So then SSD, uh, SSD is a 
really cool new technology, uh, but new is kind of the operative word inside of there. So you don't see it as much in the data center yet for two reasons. Uh, first one is, is it's really expensive, no matter what. You might, for like a data center quality um, SAS, uh, uh, sorry, SSD drive, you, you might see it cost it $1,000, you know, or somewhere around there for only 100 gigs, whereas you can get uh, the equivalent, let's say a thousand gigs, one terabyte in the SATA, you can get it for a hundred bucks. So it's it's you really got to watch out for price um, when it comes to SSD. On the other hand, SSD is super fast. It's great for that. Um, so as that um, technology matures, that's really something that you want to look out for. I, I kind of feel like it's a little bit too early to be using as a standalone storage device um, inside of a, for a VPS. And it really has to do with just the newness of the technology and whether they've figured out exactly what the reliability is, exactly what the drivers are um, that you, you know, that the VPSs need to actually run off of those drives. So very cool technology, but it, it's a little bit early before you want to trust it. Um, now, cloud, uh, cloud and RAM disk we're going to come back to. Uh, cloud, of course, is your typical, hey, the storage just kind of sits out there somewhere, um, and you don't really know exactly where it is, but it has certain size to it. You can upgrade and downgrade it, etc. cetera. But we'll come back to that. So these, these three are can be deployed in two ways in the data center. The typical, uh, well, one of the typical ways you see it is in direct attached storage. And really, that literally means that it's either inside of the box or it's physically connected to the box with a special kind of connector that is really, really fast, essentially making it just part of the box. So um, uh, let me just sketch it real quick for you because it, it helps to understand what the performance variation will be when I really talk about direct attached storage and then when I talk about cloud. So direct attached storage, let's just say this is your, this is your BPS, uh, what we call hardware node. And uh, that just means that it is the physical server that the BPS is sitting upon. Now, in most cases, this is your, you know, your, your drives are actually in here. You know, they're directly inside of the box. And uh, you may have, I didn't draw this real well, but uh, it, you may have uh, six or eight drives actually resident directly inside of the box. So and inside of the box, um, there's also another piece of hardware. So I'm going to, sorry, raise this a little bit here. There's another piece of hardware inside of the heart, uh, inside of the server that's called a RAID card. Uh, now, this is pretty much industry standard that someone is going to be using a RAID card um, inside of a hardware node for a VPS. Very, very typical. Uh, critical component on site on, on top of the RAID card is what we're going to call caching. So that takes us through um, these three. Um, uh, now, obviously, you can see one of the barriers that's here is, hey, what if I what if I need more disk space than actually what this whole server can give me. Uh, and that's one of the challenges that um, that, that cloud really kind of came in to, to address. Now, back when cloud really started to become big, there wasn't as much uh, direct attached storage available. So some of the kind of um, logics of what made the cloud real positive and, uh, um, has changed a little bit. Because you can imagine, um, let's say these are all um, the 600K drives. Or I'm sorry, the 600K drives. Um, after the RAID 10, you have 1.8 terabytes available inside of this. So if you need more than 1.8 terabytes, you're doing something pretty successfully, and you've got a really big VPS, and you may not really want to be on a VPS anymore. Uh, so we'll, we'll come back to that, too, because there, there are ways to address that. But definitely that's where the cloud really starts to come in and, and um, really kind of show its benefit. But now let's talk about um, back to the I.O., and let's talk a little bit about the cloud. So the cloud... The main issue when it comes to the cloud and I/O results from the following. So let's say this is your this is your server up here still, and instead of running off of the direct attached storage, you are going to actually be using the cloud. So this is what happens when you use the cloud. So uh, right now this is an Ethernet. Um, you'll typically you know you, you know what these are. They're they're on your on your computer right now on your PC. So here's the Ethernet. Ethernet's got to go out to a switch. Of some sort. Now, if you're using a local cloud, um, to local to your VPS, I don't mean anywhere near you, but local to your VPS, it's going to be as simple as coming out here, and then this is, let's just, you know, call this the your, your cloud storage, and, you know, maybe you've got uh, 500 gigs of storage right here. Now, the local one, um, the challenge is, is a little bit less, um, but where the real challenge comes in is when you have a cloud that's not local to where you are. So, and then this is what happens, right? So you, you're serving your website, 
off of here, right? This is your website over here. You, somebody comes to your website, they want to look at a video, right? Okay, great. So the video, what's got to happen is the, your web server now has to call out through their through its Ethernet, through this switch, through this router, out into the Internet. Then it's got to go back down into another router. And, uh, and inside of the Internet, obviously, there's a whole bunch of routing and, and various different hops that are going on. So then it comes back down into here, comes into a switch, then goes over to your, your cloud server. Um, and get your 500 gigs. So obviously the problem here is you don't even know what this is. This takes a while. This takes a while. And so it can be a real problem. So you're not just talking about, okay, hey, I've got to get my data from this server out to the person that's trying to access the site. You've got to get this data from here, through here, in here, and here, etc down to here, then this processes it, then it sends it out to the user. So that's one of the challenges with the cloud. So you've got to be real careful about this. Now, in, in some cases, it's just fine. Let's say, you know, 10 people a month come to get this particular data that sits over here. That's fine. That's not a big deal. It'll get it out there and serve it out, and it's no, no, no issue. The issues really come in uh, when you're dealing with databases. So databases are constantly moving data back and forth from your storage device, back and forth all the time, keep going, uh, and, and really small pieces of data too. So what you're going to find is that this thing has to be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's really a bad scenario. So you don't want to be in that situation. Um, and you'll see that typically in, in slow performance. So now, of course, you know, your WordPress, your Drupal, your Joomla, et cetera, they're all running database, uh, databases, and they're all moving information back and forth, little bits of data in and out of that database all the time. So that's where the cloud really creates a problem for you. Uh, the last one, the last one I'll cover just really briefly is a little bit different. RAM disk is kind of a special scenario. And all, all it really is, is it saying, hey, if you know enough about your application that you can actually tell your application, hey, you know what? Don't store on the hard drive. Store this thing in RAM. And RAM is your, literally your exact same RAM as your normal one that's you know, on your PC. It, um, it's the fastest storage ever. It's the fastest you're going to ever get. SSD is kind of a flavor of RAM. It's a little bit different just in order for it to retain um, memory, uh, retain your data without power. But RAM is really the fastest thing that you can ever get. So we use some tricks to store things that are not critical but need to be very, very fast. We store them in RAM. So we've used that a long time. So if you really get interested in making something super, super fast, uh, you know, jump on the web and look up uh, RAM disk. So I'm trying to think. I think we've covered everything inside of there. So a couple of key key things to take away. If you've got a busy site that's database packed, um, be very careful about using the cloud. If you have uh, if you have things that are just you just need a ton of storage, but people are only going to visit it once in every great while. Cloud's great, perfect solution. Um, and you know I, I definitely tell you, hey, go ahead and use that. But if you've got data and you know in particular database packed data or a lot of things that people are visiting on their website all the time. You're going to want to probably stick to some version of this. Um, in our case, I generally recommend, um, and I can tell you the specifics of it, it is a 15K SAS drive, 600 gigs on a 3.5 inch platter. Um, and it's RAID 10. RAID 10. And uh, that is the one. And there may be six of them. Or eight of them, depending on uh, depending on what you can get into the particular box that you've got. So, uh, oh, little other piece. Sorry about that. We'll add that next little bit in there. You're also gonna want to have a very high quality RAID card, um, and on that RAID cache of what I recommend is one gigabyte of RAM on there. So. That's um, that's the place uh, that um, I, I really recommend people uh, when they're looking. That's kind of the place I think that they should land when it comes to addressing the I/O problems that the VPSs have. So I'm looking forward absolutely to the SSDs as they really kind of improve their uh, reliability. Um, and again, the reliability is there in some versions, but they cost you so much that it's just impractical. There. So again, uh, it was Todd Robinson, and I uh, appreciate you taking. Uh, 
I guess, 5, 10 minutes or 15 minutes, as long as I went today to learn a little bit about I.O. and VPSs. Thank you.